Welcome back, everyone, to week six of Prospect Basketball Weekly. I'm your host, Jack Ankeny, and Coach Camardella is back to join us to talk about the Hardwood Tournament, so thanks for coming back on the Yeah, page. it's great to be back, Jack. All right, so in your guys' first game of the Hardwood, you had a pretty tough matchup against Maine West that yes. ended up going into overtime. What did it take to pull, pull that one out in the end and advance into I mean, we got blitzed. Uh, I remember looking up at the, the clock and heading into halftime, we were down 30 to 19. Um, we had played okay. We had a couple guys under the weather, um, but they came out. They had, hadn't played in almost two weeks, so we were knew we were going to get a, a really fresh and focused Maine West team. Uh, prospect alum Trent Greco, who played for us uh, about eight, nine years ago, is one of the assistants, so he knows our system really well. And uh, called the timeout, guys finished the uh, second quarter on a 6 0 run, and then slowly we've, we've really sort of built our mark as a second half team this year and, and came back, forced overtime, and were able to win it in extras. Okay. How did a tough battle in the first game prepare you for the rest of the tournament? I think the, the hardwood this year, uh, I said it to anybody who asked me, I thought it was the most competitive field in my 15 years of coaching at the hardwood. Uh, I thought really just <laughs> teams one through 16 that you didn't really have a game off. And so between Maine West and then obviously Geneva in the second game, it was an incredibly tough first couple of games. Uh, but I think we knew that going in, and our, our season has sort of been like that, is that we don't look at it as at any games as, as games off. Okay. All right, so riding a 10-game win streak into your guys' game against Geneva in the mm -hmm. second round, um, just describe the confidence the team was playing with uh, that enabled you guys to get that win. Yeah, I mean, Geneva's got some incredibly good shooters. Uh, fun stat is they start all juniors. And so we knew that, that they had experience, but they were still a little bit younger compared to, to some of the ages of the guys that we play. Um, but I mean, we watched them in the previous game, we watched them on film a little bit, and uh, we knew it was gonna be a match, but our guys felt great coming off of Maine West, and if you, you looked at the box square at the Geneva game, uh, Rathy and I weren't able to say this, but all 10 starters were in, or forgive me, all five starters were in double digits. And that's not something we think we've yeah. had before. Um, we'd have to go back and look at some stats, but it was, uh, it was a pretty incredible team effort. Okay, so then what does that say about your team, uh, round three, that you were able to ha really hang with state-ranked Niles North all the way down to the end? Yeah, it's, it just says something that I think this team has, has felt and has been working towards. Um, they, they respect all their opponents, but they're also not afraid of any of their opponents. You know, they expect to win, uh, and we've been playing like that. You know, yesterday's practice and you know, preparation for this week. You know, there's just a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and, and our guys are really keeping vision on where they want to be as a team without skipping steps. And I think that it was a great example in Niles North is we'd get down, I think we were down 11 or 12 in that first half, cut it to a single digits by halftime, tied it, you know, by a couple minutes into the fourth quarter. So, I mean, we had our chances, and it was a great learning experience for our guys. Okay. So then... Uh, looking at the Waukegan game, mm -hmm. lost another close one down to the wire. Uh, David Sutter had 41 points in yeah. that game. So what do you think the team needs to do, looking at the film of those two games, to kind of finish games off better, I guess? Yeah, in post game, I just asked him, you know, in, uh, in the Niles North game, I, I asked him, what would you do for five points? You know, in the Waukegan game, what would you do for, well, two points, but really Dave hit a three at yeah. the end. So, I mean, it was, uh, it was really like two really good games that we lost by about five. Uh, and it really, I think, comes down to a couple of rotations. We could pull, as most teams can, eight, ten plays out where there's a loose ball or there's an offensive rebound where there are these 50-50 balls that, you know, you get these swings. You know, you miss a layup, they come down and hit a three. It's a five-point swing. You know, you, you make a layup, you get a stop, it's a four- or five-point swing. I mean, it's those type of swings in games like that are massive. And for us, it's training our guys for them to realize that every possession and every moment of the game counts and we'll keep working okay what are your biggest takeaways from the tournament as a whole I think we're pretty good uh, and I think more importantly is that we've got a lot of selfless guys you know we're in double digit assists almost every game and I think we can get a little bit better on the defensive end with regards to guarding the ball uh, and I think we coming off those two games at Niles North and Waukegan they've got some of the most athletic and most skilled guards we'll see all year and so now it's, it's a matter of our guys taking that experience and building from it. And this first week of 2018, I think it will be a, a good test for us to see where we're at. Yeah, so you said earlier that uh, this tournament was one of the more tougher fields that you'd faced in the yeah. past. How do you think that prepared you for the second half of the season? I think we're ready. You know, we're sitting in a really good place with regards to record and with regards to, I think, the enthusiasm overall on the team. Um, we understand that now January and February games 
we always say to our guys is you want your East games in the new year to count, to matter, to mean something. And they put themselves in position uh, for those East games to count. And that's all you can ask for is you start preparing for uh, the postseason. Yep. All right, thank you, Coach Camardello. Yep. Next up will be an interview with junior guard Sam Murray. Welcome back to Prospect Basketball Weekly, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and Mount Prospect. I'm here with junior guard Sam Murray. Sam, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Coming off the bench as one of the team's backup guards, how do you try to bring energy off the bench? Um, well, I always try to be ready right away. Mm -hmm. um, after our starters um, start off the game, it's not uh, like I don't want to slow the game down at all. So I try to like bring energy right away right when I come in. Mm -hmm. Playing behind two senior guards in David Swidera and Tim Lawson-Hop, what have you learned the most from them this year? Um, well, they're super easy to play with. Um, I guess just to be loose, mm -hmm. just not to worry too much, like be focused, but not to be too tight. Yeah. How is playing against Swidera and Lawson-Hop in practice every day help you develop as a player? It uh, helps a ton. Guarding them, playing with them, they're really good players. Makes me a lot better player guarding them. <clears throat> and um, yeah, playing against them. Mm -hmm. what, will, what will be the team's main offensive focus um, against Wheeling this week? Uh, Wheeling, they're pretty good shooters. Um, offensively, I guess we're just going to try to um, attack their bigs. They don't have a lot of um, size mm -hmm. inside. Perfect. That's all we have for Sam Murray. Stay tuned with a, with a uh, special interview with assistant coach Brad Rathie. Welcome back, everybody, to Prospect Basketball Weekly, sponsored by Buffalo Wild Wings in Mount Prospect. I'm here with assistant coach Brad Rathie. Coach, thank you for joining us, and congratulations on your second child. Thank you, Wyatt. I really appreciate it. Holding the Gen Geneva to 48 points in the team's second round matchup, what, what did you do especially well defensively in that game? Yeah, we keyed in on some of their some of their top guys. Their sophomore kid uh, is is a really nice player. At least he will be a really really good player. Um, and just kind of making them take tough shots when the, when it's a guard heavy lineup, uh, just kind of putting pressure on them enough to to force them into tough shots. They're still going to they're still going to get their points, but uh, that was uh, that was kind of our focus was taking their guards out of play, and we did a pretty good job of it. In the next two games against Niles North and Joaquin, what could have the team done different defensively to close out those games with a win? Yeah, that's a good question. We'll get another chance at Niles North here in uh, about a month or so, but. Uh, when you have guys that are that quick and athletic, uh, it's tough. And and we adjusted in both games really well. By by the third and fourth quarter, we defended a lot better. Then they started making really tough shots on us. Uh, um, you know, Niles got one of their one of their best players back for his first game against us, and he scored twenty or something like that. And and then. Uh, Waukegan has their their two guys who are who are good make fadeaway you know jumpers that they just kind of throw in down the stretch that it, it it just it just makes it very difficult when you defend well and then they make a really tough shot so all all in all you know good stuff just you know a little bit further to get to uh, to get some of those top wins. Mm -hmm. What does it say about your team that you were able to take down rank, state ranked Niles North down to the wire? Uh, you know, I, I think that it says a lot about our guys and their confidence in, in their own game. Uh, you know, I, I think that we entered that game not too, not too nervous, not too, you know, I, we, we weren't convinced that they were going to win that game. So, so when, you, when you approach it like that, that you have a chance like that, and, and the longer you stick around, the more confidence you get. So I, I, I I have all the confidence in the world, and I'm excited to play them again. Going into your game against Wheeling, what do you preach to the team during practice defensively? Um, against Wheeling, it's another guard-heavy lineup. They shoot a ton of threes. Um, you know, I've, I've watched a little bit of film on other teams of Wheeling playing them so far since our focus has been, you know, friend and some other teams uh, as of late. But uh, it's definitely take best out of the game and, and, and try and – try and limit their their guards again. After playing the first half of the MSLE schedule, have you seen how have you seen the team grow since the start of the year? Uh, just just a lot of confidence. I mean, Dave and Tim are are good players and you know, they've had some stretches where they haven't played so well in games and you know, we knew that that would be fixed. Like that those guys those guys are are good players, but 
you know, our contributions from elsewhere, from, from you know, Johnny C in the tournament was, was great. From Kreidler has been really good. And then, you know, Jalen just adds a different dynamic to our team. And um, when he's on and, you know, when all our guys are, are clicking together, we're tough. Thank you, Coach, and stay tuned for a preview of this Friday's game with Head Coach John Camardell. Welcome back, everyone, to Week 6 of Prospect Basketball Weekly, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and Mount Prospect. Coach Camardell is back to preview this Friday's game against Wheeling. So, Coach, this week you guys head back to Wheeling mm -hmm. to play the Wildcats in, first half, or in the second, to start the second half of your East games. What do you think the, the team's biggest focus in practice this week is? So, I think the... The big thing, Wheeling's become like our second home. Yeah. You know, the guys have already played four games on the court. I think they're pretty comfortable. Um, but it's it, Wheeling presents a lot of, of interesting takes. You know, they're one of the better shooting teams in the MSL. Yeah. They take a lot of threes. Uh, and so for us, it's a matter of having really active hands, rotating quickly, closing lanes. Uh, but, yeah, Coach O'Keefe's a good friend. He does a really nice job with this team. And, you know, you got to go on the road. And... Winning on the east, winning on the road in the east is uh, is something that I know our guys take seriously, yeah. and I, I hope we get a great effort Friday. Okay, so then looking back at the hardwood, there are a couple of games when you guys had some very balanced scoring, mm -hmm. all five starters in double digits. How important do you think that will be against Wheeling to have a balanced offensive attack? Yeah, and I'll be interested to see. You know, we we try and prep for games, but you don't always know. You know what a team's going to throw at you defensively, and what I really like about where our team's at this year is that we've had instances where sometimes we'll have a guy go for 20, 25, 41. Yeah, like <laughs> we talked about. But a lot of other times, and where we've been is is when we're at our best is when we have two, three, four guys in double digits. Yeah. Um, and if on certain nights, you know, we need to to have David or someone else put us on his back and, and carry us, great. Um, but I think even David would tell you that. When we're operating really, really efficiently, is when the ball's moving. It's not sticking. It's not on the ground that much, uh, and we're letting it fly. You know, with balanced feet from deep. So, I think for the most part, guys are really excited to get back. We've had a long layoff now. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't played since December 30th, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what what the Knights got in the second half of the year. Okay. So Wheeling's guard Michael Best was mm -hmm. tied for fourth in scoring in the hardwood. What do you think you you guys will need to do to limit his production on Friday? He's a really experienced player. You know, he's been up a lot on varsity um i think he's got a great release i think he's got <laughs> great speed uh and so it's a matter of just trying to limit his rhythm which i think goes with any any shooter uh if you watch some of the the best shooters in college and in the nba you can tell when they're in a rhythm when when the defense isn't making them get off balance not make them shoot shots off balance you know and that's all you can really do is is once you get to a certain level you you try and disrupt guys you try and limit their touches uh, and that's what we'll try and do. But like I, I said, a lot of really good players in the MSL, they can get their own shots, and they have teammates yeah. that help get them open. Uh, so we got our work cut off for us, that's okay. for sure. So after a 10-day layoff from games, what kind of mindset are you trying to get the team into in, uh, ahead of this Friday's game? Yeah, I mean, Rathy and I talked. We, we gave our guys some days off over the last 10 days to make sure they're fresh. Um, and I think the, the biggest thing is most of the weeks now heading into you know the second half of the season, we'll have a couple of games a week. So it's a matter of, of taking our scouts seriously, but then also looking at who we are as a team. And, and like I said, I think we've really built an identity that, that we really adjust well at halftime and, and play really solid second halves. And so that's what we're, we're looking to do is come out, be aggressive, play passionate, be enthusiastic in the first 60 minutes, see where we're at, and then sort of recalibrate or continue based on where we're at. And I think that level of confidence, our guys know that the game's not won or lost in the first 16 minutes. Yeah. And they're confident we share responsibility that the staff will will tell them what needs to be done in the second half and they'll execute it okay so this game concludes the first half of the msle schedule mm -hmm. how do you think you've seen the team grow since the start of conference play it's a great question um i think all high school teams in particular you know you deal with different balances on your team so every year you're pretty much losing half and adding half and so the ultimate question is how quickly will your team grow together? And what I loved about this team is after dropping the first two games of the year, they immediately rallied and turned that around to, you know, put us on a nice, nice win streak. And we're still on that. And uh, I think that's the best thing I could say about this team right now is they they relish in their roles. These guys, top to bottom, are are doing what they can with the roles they've earned and been given. And uh, I think that's the big thing is sort of seizing the moment that that we've got not looking past anybody and getting really excited to play at Wheeling Friday. All right, good. 
Thank you, Coach Camardella. That should do it for week six of Prospect Basketball Weekly, brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings and Mount Prospect. We'll see you next week.